Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, ANN partners with AUVSI, U.S. Senators call for ATC national discussion, and Jeff Bezos has the sights set on the moon. Hello, I'm Christopher Seale, it's March 8th, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. ANN and the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International, the world's largest nonprofit organization devoted exclusively to advancing the unmanned systems and robotics community, are pleased to announce the debut of the next step in comprehensive aviation and aerospace news coverage, Airborne Unmanned, video coverage dedicated specifically to all things unmanned. It covers the latest news and information of interest to the entire unmanned systems and robotics community and will be available through AUVSI, ANN, YouTube, Vimeo, and dozens of other syndication partners. AUVSI President and CEO Brian Wynn says, through this partnership with Aerial News Network to produce Airborne Unmanned, AUVSI is expanding its reach to provide news and information about this growing and thriving industry. Airborne Unmanned will complement our existing communications channels, including Unmanned Systems Magazine and the Daily E-Brief to keep AUVSI members and the entire community informed of the latest technology innovations, business transactions, and public policy that are supporting the safe deployment and implementation of unmanned systems throughout the world. One additional benefit of this teaming are a number of special projects ANN and AUVSI will be bringing to Exponential, AUVSI's annual convention and trade show, to be held May 8th to 11th, 2017 in Dallas, Texas. ANN will be producing a special Exponential Innovation Preview, as well as several days of live coverage. Manufacturers, personnel, educators, and companies working in the unmanned vehicle sphere are encouraged to reach out to ANN to introduce themselves via Jim at aero-news.net. Airborne Unmanned episodes may be accessed at www.airborne-unmanned.net. A letter sent to DOT Secretary Elaine Chow by U.S. Senators Jerry Moran and Amy Klobuchar supports Chow's call issued during her recent confirmation hearings for a national discussion regarding modernization of the nation's air traffic control system. In this letter, the lawmakers note that any decision regarding ATC modernization carries significant ramifications for millions of aviation stakeholders, from such diverse areas as GA pilots, manufacturers, and support workers, to employees with the FAA, the airlines, the military, commercial space operators, remote aircraft operators, and others. Among the factors impacting the continuing debate over ATC modernization and ongoing deployment of the FAA's next-gen air transportation network has been the concept, long pushed by some airlines, for replacing congressional oversight of the nation's ATC network with a private entity governed by an airline-centric board and funded by new user fees. The concept has long been opposed by the NBAA and other organizations, as well as by the federal and local elected officials and most voters. In reference to the issue, the senator's letter recalls that during her confirmation hearing, Chow stated that any decision on changes to air traffic control in the United States needed to be a dialogue, a great discussion, a national discussion, and would require a national consensus. After the break, Jeff Bezos has his sights set on the moon. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. 
Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. All of a sudden, everyone wants to go to the moon. Jeff Bezos is thinking way beyond suborbital flights by his space company Blue Origin. The internet billionaire has proposed sending a robotic lander to the south pole of the moon by 2020, which could lead to Amazon-like deliveries to a future lunar human colony. A white paper has been making the rounds in Washington, including at NASA, and with the new Trump administration. In it, Blue Origin describes the deployment of a lunar spacecraft and lander that would travel to the moon's south pole, where there is almost continuous sunlight for the generation of solar energy. The paper calls on NASA to get behind the idea of an Amazon-like delivery service to make human colonization of the moon a reality. One of Bezos' rivals in the commercial space business, Elon Musk, recently made headlines with an announcement that he plans to send two paying private space tourists on a to the moon and back mission next year, which would come before NASA can launch its first Orion capsule to the moon. NASA has said that it is looking at the feasibility of making that first launch a manned mission, so it would seem that the space race to the moon is back on. With some 3,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. It is going to be an interesting year. Um, I have every uh, bit of faith that it's going to be a good year. The day before the official kickoff of the 2016 Aircraft Electronics Association International Convention and Trade Show, a ns Editor-in-Chief, Jim Campbell, sat down for an in-depth conversation with AEA President Paula Dirks. If you love all things avionics, you're going to love this conversation. Search Errol TV, Paula Dirks Part 1, Avionics Talk, with no holds barred on Errol TV's news channel. After these messages, DAC wants to upgrade Sikorsky S-76s. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus Engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. DAC International has received an STC to install the Esterline CMA 6800 LCD display on S-76BC helicopters. The STC includes approvals for the S-76B, S-76C Plus, and S-76C++ models. DAC President Cisco Hernandez believes that the CMA 6800 display offers many benefits as a form fit function replacement for the Honeywell ED800 products on many of the S76 helicopters around the world. Frasca International has sold seven AATDs for Bells 206 407 series helicopters to Air Evac Live Team, a prominent U.S. helicopter air ambulance provider. The seven AATDs will be used by Air Evac to provide recurrent flight training for 600 pilots every four months on HAA operating procedures and flight in advertent instrument meteorological conditions. For over 20 years, the Air Force has flown the MQ-1 Predator RPA in combat, followed by the MQ-9 Reaper. Combined with a skilled aircrew, these aircraft provide consistent support in daily engagements. 
While the MQ-1 has provided many years of service, the Air Force plans to retire the MQ-1 early next year to keep up with the continuously evolving battle space environment. One of Google's Project Loon Balloons recently fell from the sky and into a forest in Brazil, surprising locals. The balloon was designed to bring internet service to such rural areas, but it is not known why the balloon failed. Google has apologized to local residents in the Ostezas area in the north-central Brazilian state of Amazon, where the balloon came down. The lower chamber of the Washington state legislator has approved a bipartisan bill to create an aviation-themed license plate, with proceeds from the sale of the tag being directed towards aviation development in the state. The bill, HB 1400, passed the state House of Representatives 94 to 4. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch now. Let's get back to the rest of the news. The Pentagon has announced that the Brigadier General Paul W. Tibbets IV has been promoted to Vice Commander, Headquarters Air Force Global Strike Command at Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana. Tibbets is the grandson of Brigadier General Paul Tibbets Jr., who was the pilot of the B-29 Enola Gay on the historic mission to deliver an atomic bomb over Hiroshima, Japan, on August 6, 1945. Tibbets IV has been commander of the 509th Bomb Wing at Whiteman Air Force Base, Missouri, which is the same bomber wing in which his grandfather served. The Air Force Global Strike Command has responsibility for the nation's three intercontinental ballistic missile wings, the entire bomb force of the USAF, including B-52, B-1, and B-2 wings. It will also oversee the Long Range Strike Bomber Program. The promotion puts Tibbets IV second in command of the United States Nuclear Deterrence and Global Strike Operations. He will report to General Robin Rand, according to the Air Force Times. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest in aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aerol-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>